Hi, my name is Steve Watson, the Maricopa County School Superintendent, and thank you for joining us for this month's STEM Pro Live. And today we're with Phoenix Children's Hospital, and during this broadcast we will learn from Dr. Davinder Singh, Division Chief of Plastic Surgery at PCH, about her career as a doctor. We'll also hear from Merritt Thorkelson, a multidimensional imaging technologist, and how she combines art with science and technology to create 3D models to support medical developments. These professionals have amazing careers and may inspire you to pursue a medical career pathway. Let's check it out. Hi, I'm Devinder Singh. I'm a pediatric plastic surgeon at Phoenix Children's Hospital. I am the division chief of uh, pediatric plastic surgery and we take care of children with all sorts of conditions from head to toe. Um, so a typical day for us in, in plastic surgery involves seeing patients in clinic. Um, it's a particular joy because we also get to meet the parents and spend time with the entire family, getting to know them, getting to know what their needs are. And then we also spend time in surgery operating all day. And we generally have two to three surgeries a day, depending on how long each surgery is. So plastic surgery is unique in that um, we operate from the head all the way down to the toes. Uh, within plastic surgery, we have different types of specialties. Uh, my specialty is in cleft and craniofacial, so I repair a lot of birth anomalies, children who are born with uh, cleft lip and palate or an abnormal head shape where their brain doesn't have enough room to grow, and we need to increase the size of their head uh, to allow for their brain to grow. My patients are really my extended family, and as much as I miss seeing my own children during the day, I feel like I'm blessed with having so many other children and so many other families in my life, and I love being able to take care of them and to be able to get to know them not just as patients but as human beings, um, what they enjoy doing, uh, what subjects they like. Uh, a lot of them have become interested in math and science and medicine because of the experiences they've had here at Phoenix Children's Hospital. and. I, uh, I love being able to support that and be able to grow that interest for them. I think one of the big things I've realized over the years is the importance of communication and of collaboration. You know, communication, speaking, collaborating, having leadership skills uh, to know how to put the team together and have the team function to be able to help patients. Um, and I would say probably about 85% of my patients uh, we take care of as teams. It's not just myself. I'm, I'm the surgeon, but there are probably eight or nine other specialties and doctors and colleagues who help take care of, of my patients and our patients. Within craniofacial plastic surgery, um, there are many fewer women than there are men, uh, but I'm happy to say from the time I entered the field, uh, 18 years ago where there were just a handful of us. Uh, now we have a group of women craniofacial surgeons and there are about 30 of us. Um, many of them are very young in their training and this is across the U.S. Um, so many of them are very young um, within the first five to six years of their career and there are only a handful of us who are at this far into my career. Uh, but it um, is great to have been able to mentor um, women and women plastic surgeons, women physicians, uh, even women who are not in my specialty. I think we're a huge team of um, colleagues and helping support one another and figuring out how to balance um, work and life and career is really important and I think mentoring one another is important. PCH is really like a big family. Uh, you know, there's obviously there's structure here, but um, we really feel at every level we're listened to. Everyone is open to hearing our ideas. Uh, PCH is very innovative. If we have an idea about how to restructure something or how to make things better for our patients, we're able to be able to go to leadership and talk about it and really make changes. Um, the culture here is for everyone to work as a team and not to specifically have people in certain positions even though that structure is there it helps when we're all at the table together and able to share our ideas and have everyone listen to them you know when we're planning out surgeries um, and treatments for our patients we work together as a team we have um, 
companies that help us with 3D medical modeling and planning of the surgeries. We work with engineers, uh, web-based, where we can plan out the surgical movement and these 3D images are then printed out into models and we do model surgery on uh, the actual 3D printed material. That really saves us a lot of time in the operating room in terms of planning and not to mention, uh, you know, the, the bone is covered with muscle and skin and so we're not able to get the same visualization in the operating room that we're able to get uh, using the uh, 3D images and the 3D medical modeling that we're using for surgical planning. I think in the most important thing you can do in middle school and in high school is to just work really hard and have an open mind to learning. Not just the sciences, but as I said, even the language arts, even um, history, understanding all of that is important because it helps you to be able to connect with your patients and with your colleagues. We connect on a human level. Uh, we connect by interacting and by conversation and working together as a team. And I think that those skills are just as important as the skills of math and science. Um, so if you are really interested in pursuing medicine, I say go try to do some volunteer work. Um, see if you like the environment. Uh, come shadow us at Phoenix Children's Hospital. We'd be happy to have the students come. Hello, my name is Marit Torkelson and I'm a 3D multi-modality imaging tech at Phoenix Children's Hospital. So for my job, I take CAT scan, which is computed tomography images, and also MRI, which stands for magnetic resonance images. And I take the 2D pictures they acquire from CT and MRI and post-process them into 3D images. For example, a cardiac exam, um, child comes in and has a cardiac CT, so I take the images and put it into my computer program and I trace out every part of your heart it has a color assigned to it, so your aorta um, is red, so I will trace that out and put a color on it and make it red, so once I'm done with tracing out every part of your heart. I put it all together so it turns into a colorful 3D model or picture we can um, print in our 3D printer or we can just manipulate it on the computer screen and the doctors can figure out what's going on or what's wrong with your heart and how they should go about doing surgery. For a career in 3D lab, I started out as a radiologic technologist so I went to school for x-ray and I did that for a couple years after x-ray I went into MRI and I did MRI for about 20 years so about six years ago is when the 3D lab kind of started to come around so basically if you want to get into 3D imaging or multi multi-modality imaging you need to start a career path in radiology. Start out with x-ray so you learn your anatomy and then you can expand and grow from there. So my job is very rewarding in where I can use the technology um, in my 3D lab to help children so they are able to actually see what's inside their body. Um, they get very excited to because when you look in the mirror, you can't see your organs, you can't see your bones, you can't see your blood vessels. So when they see my 3D colorful pictures, they get so excited because they can actually see what is going on inside their bodies. They're very curious. They want to know what the pictures, you know, what they are. So it's fun to explain what's going on and show them the pictures. So the 3D models also help the doctors um, explain to the child what's going on. So if they print a 3D um, model, the doctors can actually take it to the parents and the child and go over everything. They can show them the parts of the anatomy, you know, what's wrong or what shouldn't be in this place and what versus what should be. So um, it helps the 3D models actually help the doctors explain to the parents and child what's going on inside their bodies. For my job, um, it entails a lot of different areas, so it could be very artistic because we can um, 
manipulate our computer software. So like I was saying earlier, every organ has a different color, every part of your heart is a different color. So with our computer technology, um, we use lots of different colors and transparencies and templates to make these um, visually graphic, eye-pleasing pictures. So when I get up in the morning, I get excited to come to work here at Phoenix Children's Hospital because I know I'm going to be helping the kids here. And that's very special to me, knowing that I'm helping them. On a normal day, I come in, log on to my computer, and I see what cases um, that are scheduled for the day. So I will start on, usually cardiacs are, are big cases. So I will load the MRI cardiac scan they did into my computer, and I will start tracing out the different parts of your heart. So I will trace out the aorta, the different, the ventricles, your arteries, your veins, all, all the vessels that are going to your heart and away from your heart. And then once I'm done basically coloring in or drawing in the anatomy, I um, send those pictures to the doctors and they take a look and see if they need anything else. 3D Lab, um, it's a very fun career. It's very innovative and you can use your mind and get creative in this job. So if you're a creative person and like to be innovative, this is a job for you. It's perfect. <laughs> Welcome back students. Now this is time for our live question and answer session with Dr. Singh. The first question, we're, we have a lot of questions coming in. Please continue to use the Q&A button to submit your questions. Uh, the first question coming in, Dr. Singh, is what are some advantages of working at Phoenix Ch Children's Hospital as opposed to a general hospital or owning your own practices? And what might be some backdrops? Well, I think the biggest advantage of working in a pediatric hospital, specifically Phoenix Children's, is that uh, we come to work every day and we are all very passionate about taking care of children. I think working in a larger hospital where uh, the hospital takes care of adults and children, uh, the focus is on everyone, but I like being in a place where the focus is on children. And, you know, one of the uh, things I've noticed the most about Phoenix Children's in comparison to some of the other hospitals is that everyone works together as a team and we collaborate and uh, because everybody is so excited to be at work, it's a really fun, happy place to come to work every day. Thank you. And we have a question coming in from Mr. Anway's fifth grade class from Kyrene de Colina, and they'd like to ask, what is your favorite part of your job? Well, I always, I always joke with the parents, my favorite part is really uh, speaking with the kids, uh, cuddling with the babies, uh, really getting to know my patients. I have a passion for surgery, but I have a bigger passion for just connecting uh, with all the kids I take care of. And I follow them from the time they're born until they go off to college and even afterwards. And I really like for them to feel that I'm in a way part of their family and that they're comfortable uh, connecting and speaking with me. Uh, so I'd have to say that's my favorite part. Thank you. And we have another question from a student, Sophia, from Ms. Lito's class in Imagine Rosefield. And she's asking, how long have you worked with babies? Are babies more difficult to work with than older kids? Um, so I've been uh, doing pediatric plastic surgery for about, uh, including my training for almost 25, 26 years. And uh, I think that certainly working with little babies is harder than working with, with older kids. And it's because the, the babies are smaller, their organs, their body, um, everything is a lot smaller. The skin is more sensitive. And, and so we have to take care and make sure we understand how to take care of uh, little babies as well as little kids and big kids. Thank you. And we have a question from Christy Schofield, an eighth grade teacher at Sierra Verde. And she sponsors a club called Moxie Girls. And they want to know what is the most challenging thing about being a female in your profession? I think, you know, I typically approach my day-to-day uh, -day 
life as a doctor um, and not so much as I'm a female doctor, but I acknowledge that particularly in the sciences and especially in surgery and in cranial facial surgery, uh, there are fewer women. And so I feel like it's important for our voices and our ideas to be heard. Uh, every person who participates in a career brings something unique uh, to the table. And I think the challenge is really just having the confidence to speak up and having the skill set and the knowledge to uh, share our ideas. Thank you for that. And then we have a question from Ander Moore at Bridges Elementary. And the question is, when you were a kid, did you know you wanted to be a doctor? And how long did you have to go to college for this job? Well, no, I did not know when I was a kid that I wanted to uh, be a doctor. I um, always loved taking care of um, people, kids, animals, and I loved art. Um, so when I was younger, I would always be taking apart things, putting things back together, um, and just loving to take care of other people. I love to babysit. I used to teach in a children's library and do story time for them. Um, it wasn't really until I got further into my education that I decided I wanted to go into medicine and into plastic surgery. Um, it is a long road, so I don't want to scare anyone, but it is a fun road. Uh, so you do four years of college after uh, high school, and then you uh, do a residency program, which is where you actually work in the hospital. They train you every day to do what you're going to do. Uh, and that's in different areas of medicine. And for that, for me, that was seven years. And then I did another year of fellowship training after that. Perfect, thank you. And another question that came in is, what type of math do you use on a daily basis or what is the importance of math classes for your <laughs> career? Well, I think that uh, we definitely use uh, basic math every day because we have to calculate um, how much medicine to give children and, um, you know, just the, the simple math that you're learning. If you're asking me about calculus, um, I think you have to get pretty elaborate in uh, planning of things to use calculus, but I do use geometry every day. I think because plastic surgery is a very visual and artistic field, understanding angles um, and the way things fit together. And we do a lot of surgical planning ahead of time. And I think probably um, that is the uh, subset of math that I use the most. Thank you very much. And just for the students out there that are in the lower uh, elementary and middle school, calculus is a higher level math course that essentially kind of puts everything you learned in algebra and geometry together to make assumptions or, or predictions of things. Um, another question that's come in several times actually is, how long is the average surgery and how long does it take to prepare someone for surgery? And then you as a doctor, how long does it take you to prepare for a surgery? Those are great questions. And I think about that a week ahead of time uh, when I'm looking at my surgery schedule. So there are some surgeries uh, which are straightforward. We do them very commonly. They're very safe and they're anywhere from 45 minutes to two to three hours. Uh, and then there are surgeries uh, which are much more complex and we don't do as frequently. And those can be all day long, nine to 12 hour surgeries. Um, those are the surgeries where I spend a lot of time preparing, a lot of time doing medical modeling ahead of time. Um, and I frequently spend my, uh, some time over the weekends or in the evenings preparing for those surgeries. So you mentioned medical modeling, can you, uh, give just a brief, simple description for our students on what that is exactly? Sure. Um, so I have uh, a medical model in my office right here, and I can show that as a visual aid if that's okay. Yes. So this is a 3D medical model um, that's taken from a head CT scan, and we do surgery. So this is a pretty complex surgery we're planning, and this is one of those day-long surgeries. And this is a child where you can see that the middle portion of the face is further back. This impacts their ability to feed, to speak, uh, and to breathe. And so this is a surgery where we plan, where we're using the model, we make the cuts on the model, and then we're able to plan the movement forward. 
Um, and a lot of this is done on the computer. Uh, this is the kind of the hands-on portion of it. Um, so I think you saw in the video uh, that played earlier, uh, all the work that goes in on the part of our technicians to do the uh, computer uh, portion of the medical modeling. Thank you for that. Um, there's another question coming in um, asking, did you have any mentors uh, in, as you progressed through your high school education or early in your career? And can you kind of share that with us? Sure. I um, was blessed to have mentors all along the way. I had some amazing teachers in middle school and high school. And um, one I particularly was my physics teacher and the other was my uh, AP English teacher. Um, and both of them were just really encouraged me to learn, not even just in their subject matter, but inspired me to have an open mind to always ask why and to not be scared of asking questions. Um, and that was the best way to learn and to not focus necessarily on one thing, but enjoy learning all aspects. Um, they also helped me, uh, you know, guide me as to what activities I would enjoy, what I would um, benefit from and um, how to grow as a student. Thank you. And then kind of going along with that, and you sort of mentioned a little bit is uh, a question from Gabriel at Barcelona Elementary School. The question is, what is the best way to train for a job like yours? <laughs> I think that's a great question, especially coming from someone in elementary school. Definitely a thinker. Um, I think the biggest thing is to just work hard and learn. Um, take every subject and everything that you're exposed to in school and in life um, and embrace it and ask questions and uh, soak up all the information that you can because everything you learn along your way will help you to be um, a doctor and to be able to connect to your patients and to the people you work with. Thank you. And then now we have a question from Ms. Williams class in fifth grade class in Kyrene Kalina. And the question is, do the children you work with understand what they're undergoing and how do you explain it to them? That is a great question. It's something I ask myself every day when I uh, see my patients. Um, certainly the kids who are under two or three who yet have not started talking and have not started thinking about kind of more complex things um, don't understand uh, the concept of surgery. But uh, for those children, we're very gentle with how we um, take care of them, how we bring them to the operating room. The parents are very involved in their care. Um, as soon as the kids start speaking, I start explaining to them in the office when I see them with their parents um, what's going to be happening and why we need to do surgery and how it's going to help them. And particularly reassuring them that they're not going to feel anything and it's not going to hurt them. I think those are the biggest questions kids have and even older kids. Um, I would have those same questions if I were having surgery. Um, so we spend a lot of time preparing our children and our patients to make sure they're comfortable and they know exactly what's going to happen. Um, and I, uh, I think it's more important to actually communicate with them than it is with the parents, because they're the ones who are going through all of this. Thank you. And another question that we have is what helps you persevere when things get hard in your, at your job? That's a great question because things do get hard. Um, as much as we try to uh, prepare for surgery and prepare for the day, um, sometimes things don't go as planned at, or they're unexpected and it's just the way science is and the human body is. And what I always turn back to is remembering that um, what brought me uh, to my job and that is a passion for taking care of children and a passion for working together as a team. Um, I turn to my teammates in the operating room. I turn to my teammates in my office uh, for support and for encouragement when things go hard, get hard. And I think we do that for one another. Um, but I always remember uh, the good things about work when things are, are getting a little bit hard for the, during the day. Thank you. And there's only time for one more question. I do apologize if we didn't get to your question. We did have a lot of questions this session. Here's the last question. For students that are interested in pursuing the medical field, 
or plastic surgery, what advice do you can you give them? And do you have any tips or pointers for that? Sure. I think we touched on this a little bit earlier to just keep an open mind uh, in every subject. Um, work hard. Uh, the medical career is demanding, but as demanding as it is and as hard as you have to work, it's equally rewarding. Um, it is not just are you able to take care of people and of patients and help them, uh, but you're also able to uh, use math, science, art, language, English, communication, uh, a lot of skills uh, which you gain during your education. Um, if you want to go into plastic surgery, we're happy to have you come visit me here. Uh, I have a lot of colleagues here also, and we all love teaching, and uh, we welcome you all. Well, thank you, Dr. Singh, so much for responding for, to all our questions. We really appreciate the time. I know you have a very busy schedule, and usually Fridays are your surgery days. So thank you very much for taking the time for that. We also appreciate uh, Phoenix Children's Hospital for partnering with Maricopa County School Superintendent to make this happen. Uh, teachers, as a reminder, will be sending out an email with a link with this uh, session recorded so that you can share with colleagues or with anybody else that's interested or go back and refer to some of the points with your students. Uh, we'd also like to invite our teachers, students, parents, and any other educators to visit our website and visit our STEM challenge, uh, Solve It Challenge. This month, our focus in, is on healthy living and the students will be working on developing an app that will help student, people in their family and community be healthy and get moving. Uh, thank you so much again for joining us. And remember, this is just one of the many amazing careers that you, the students, can pursue in your future. We'll see you next time on STEM Pro Live. Thanks, everybody.